looking at number six on the kind of the review packet. Given the function defined by this thing, find all values of x for which the graph of f is concave up. Okay, so f is concave up. When, how, what am I looking for? That double prime is positive. Okay, so let's find f double prime. Can't get there directly. And maybe this is another reason we don't do 96 derivatives, because you can't really get there directly. You'd have to find the first 95. 15x to the fourth minus 60x squared. The second derivative then be 60x cubed minus 120x. So the numbers are big, but it's not awful. If we set that equal to 0, and factor out a 60x, so my, remember we don't know a name for these, second order critical points, or whatever you guys wanted to call them, Crit square root of 2. Crit points 2. Crit points 2. Pick out your favorite name for those things. Places where the second derivative is 0 are undefined because that's the only places it would change concavity. So I need to set up a second derivative number line because I want to know about concavity. We're confused because we thought we were supposed to use the first derivative critical points. That would be if we're looking for maximums and minimums. First derivative tells us potential max and mins. Here, I didn't ask, didn't ask for any of that. I just want concavity. So this is like purely a second derivative problem. So why would you use the second derivative test when you want the max and mins? Like, why would you just use the first? Derivative? Well, it's like it's you have. You could, depending on the problem, you might be able to only use the first derivative test. Hmm. Hold that thought. I will make up a problem where that forces you to use the second derivative test. I think. Um, let's see. 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2. Uh, let's see. If I plug in 2, everything's going to be positive. Trying to figure out how to make this the easiest. So that'd be concave up. If I plug in 1, that would be uh, positive times negative. So that would be concave down. If I plug in negative 1, I get negative times negative. That's concave up. Plug in negative 2, I'm going to end up with negative. Concave down. And now the question said, where is it concave up? Right there and right there. So negative 2 to 0 and greater than negative square root of 2 to 0 and greater than square root of 2. is going on, that won't be an official question, but you get what I'm asking, maybe. What is going on at x equals 1? 
Wait a minute, that doesn't look good. And let's make this two, just so that we're, we're out of order here. Now it works better. Okay, it's definitely a critical point. Yes, for sure, because f prime is zero. It's a maximum. Why do you say it's a maximum? Never mind, I changed my answer. It's a minimum. Okay. Why did you first say it's a maximum? Because I was confused. <laughs> Why do you say it's a minimum? It's concave up, so I know it's a it's a flat spot, and it's concave up, so it's a relative minimum by the second derivative test. The these numbers are there to confuse you. That is correct. You just need positives and negatives. Because it looks like, well, these are also there to confuse you because it looks like this is increasing and this is decreasing. So why is that not a maximum? And the answer is, well, I don't know what's going on right close to one. Like there's more stuff going on than what I see here. Yes, it's increasing at negative three and it's decreasing at two. But it could be doing something else. Oops, maybe I can put that where you see it. So sneaky, it's a minimum. Because if you think first derivative test, you think, oh, it goes from first derivative goes from positive to negative, that would suggest a maximum there if we're not thinking about other potential pictures. So that sort of suggests a maximum, but we don't know that there's other critical points or other stuff going on. So just with this table, I'm not sure about that. But I can for sure say if the second derivative is positive and we're concave up, concave up, and we have a horizontal tangent line, then that's definitely a minimum. So there is some misleading information in this table that's trying to trick you into doing a first derivative test. But a first derivative test, you'd have to have a number line with, um, with critical points. And I don't know what the other critical points are. So the 12 and negative They are irrelevant, meant to throw you off. More than throw you off, like meant to put you on the wrong path toward deciding that that's a relative maximum. Okay, so the, I know that like the second derivative tells you like, I knew that was talking about because second was positive. Yes. It's bit zero, like are we just, that's just critical point like, every time? If, if f prime is zero, it's a critical point. Okay. That could mean it's a max or a min, but it could also mean, like a critical point could also be um, something like that, that point right in there. Where so it, what if we were asking this to solve for like the x equals negative three? <laughs> look at the so I, I can't really conclude anything about negative okay, yeah, three, okay. other than it's increasing right there, and it's concave down right there. Okay, that's all. But I. So like why would we work number eight? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Any any other questions about this silly made up problem? Number eight. Is there one like that on the test? Is there? I don't remember, honestly. There is number eight. Oh, I'm so glad you asked number eight because that's one wasn't asked either in first period. So good call. Great call. So that also means watch the video for this review and you'll get some of the others worked. All right, the function, this has a horizontal tangent. Hey, what's that mean, horizontal tangent? Maybe max min. No. Definitely, a critical Definitely a critical point. What does it mean in terms of variables and derivatives? X equals zero. Doesn't mean x equals zero. F prime is equal to zero. It means f prime is equal to zero. And a point of inflection. What's that mean? F double prime is equal to zero. Okay. At the same value of x, what must be b? Okay, so it gave me two pieces of information. Let's take some derivatives and see what we learn. 4x cubed plus 2bx 
plus 8 <coughs> equals 0 because there's a horizontal tangent line there. Yeah, like you said, two variables, that's not really helpful. That doesn't, that doesn't do much for me. Second derivative, 12x squared plus 2b. That's a b, not a 6. Equals 0. Has to equal 0. Well, that doesn't help me much either. They're both zero. You can set them equal to each other. Okay, be careful. That's true. Still doesn't help. I can set them equal to each other because they're both zero. True, but I would still have two equations. I still have two unknowns in my equation. Let's instead solve for b. b would be negative 6x squared. So this is like Algebra 1, Algebra 2 stuff. 4x cubed plus 2 times b, which is now negative 6x squared, times x plus 8 equals 0. So 4x cubed minus 12x cubed plus 8 equals 0. Oh, that was kind of kind of them. Negative 8x cubed plus 8 equals 0. So x cubed equals 1. No, just 1. Which means x equals to 1. And if you look at my key online, you can see I, where I made the mistake. I circled C as the answer. Why is C not the answer? Because it's not B. That is X. What is the value of B? So yeah, you get so excited. You're like, oh man, I solved this really hard problem. The answer is 1. Well, Time to point. Yeah. Time to point. X is 1. I need what B is. So B is equal to negative 6 times X squared. Negative 6. So not C, but E. Nazi. <laughs> that and I think most of these are old AP test questions, by the way. So that's sort of the flavor of what you get on some of them. So you had to know some calculus. F prime equals zero. F double prime equals zero. That got you started. Then you had to know some algebra and be real careful about what your answers meant. Time for one more, probably. Ten. Number 10. The derivative of f attains its maximum value. So that would be 4 thirds x cubed minus x to the fourth. Okay, this is tricky because I want to maximize not f, but I want to maximize f prime. So how do I figure out where f prime has a maximum? Set it equal to zero would help me learn where f has a maximum. I want to know where f prime reaches a maximum. I'm going to have to do another derivative. It's not a second derivative test. It's I want to maximize. You know what? Let's just call this G. Just rename it. I want to know where G attains a maximum. So just forget F and F prime. I want to know where G. I mean, yeah, g is the derivative of f, but we're done with that part of the problem. So now the derivative of g. So I want to know where g has a maximum. So I need to take g's derivative. Good afternoon, Mustangs. Freshmen, please report to your fit class when the bell rings. Also, juniors, 
When the bell rings, please report to the big gym for a junior class meeting about prom. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Juniors. We're taking money out of your budget for prom. Where are juniors having I think I don't know. It's probably a fundraiser thing, because don't you do the fundraiser in your junior year? Uh, I don't think you guys might not have because of COVID. Cough, cough. All right, so back to this. So G Prime has a. And I want to I want a G prime test because I want to know where G changes from increasing to decreasing. No, well, it's the second derivative of F. It's the first derivative of G. I just renamed it because I didn't want to mess with. Like, I want to know where G has a maximum. Sure, it's the derivative of F, but I'm I'm done with that part of the problem. That would be positive. So G is positive, increasing there. I plug in one half, I get a positive. So G is increasing there. I plug in two, get a negative. So G is decreasing there. So that means G has a max at x equals one. But shh, don't tell anybody, but yeah, it's, that's the second derivative of f that we found. But what's the difference between the first derivative test and the second derivative test? We did, this is what's confusing, we did a first derivative test of g. I plugged it into G prime because I want to know if G prime is positive or negative because that will tell me if G is increasing or decreasing. Um, you have four things. And do three of the four. And what was the other one? There was a 192, a packet, the review. There was one other thing. The CalcX thing, yeah. SpaceX, I don't know what that... Yeah, so possible. Uh, that's good for me. Yep. 